Hi, I'm Ken Bogi, and I'm going to talk about UI. In 2009, Dr. Yukio Hatoyama became the 93rd Prime Minister of Japan. And during the election campaign, Dr. Hatoyama stressed the importance of UI.、Uh, today, UI is a thriving movement in Japan, and、uh, the movement is dedicated to the promotion of fraternity and peace. Now, UI、uh, is spelled U I, but it's also spelled Uh, U and I to emphasize togetherness, and、uh, which is steadfastly rooted in contemporary Japan, and it has a long and venerable tradition and history. Now,、uh, Dr. Yukio Hatoyama's grandfather was Ichiro Hatoyama. Ichiro Hatoyama was the founder and the first president of the Liberal Democratic Party, and he served as the Prime Minister of Japan from 1954 to 1956. Ichiro Hatoyama translated the book *The Totalitarian State Against Man* under the title *Jiu to Jinsei: Freedom and Life* in 1953. This book, *The Totalitarian State Against Man*, was written by Richard Nicholas von Kudenhof Karelgi, whose Japanese name was Ejiro Aoyama.、Uh, Kudenhof Karelgi's mother was Mitsuko Aoyama, and she met a.、Uh, Austrian diplomat stationed in Tokyo and married and moved to Europe.、Uh, Mitsuko Aoyama's relative、uh, was Jiro Aoyama, who is a famous art critic and、um, who had associations with such legendary figures as Jiro uh, Shirasu, uh, Masako Shirasu, and Hideo Kobayashi. Now,、uh, the fact that Kudenhof Karelgi. Was a charismatic figure in European history can be testified by the fact that he was actually the model for、uh, Victor Razlo、uh, in the film Casablanca in 1942. So, you know, in the film,、uh, Victor Razlo is a really charismatic figure, a resistance fighter, and he was modeled after Kudenhof Karelgi. Uh, Kudenhof Karelgi's mother, Mitsuko, was a charismatic figure too, and、uh, the perfume、uh, Mitsuko uh, from Geran is、uh, rumored to be inspired by Mitsuko Aoyama.、Uh, Kudenhof Karelgi、uh, had、uh, many really、uh, important collaborators. For example,、uh, Winston Churchill, who served as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, and also Charles de Gaulle. Who was the president of、uh, post-war France? Were his collaborators. Now,、uh, if you look back at European history,、uh, there were really difficult times, and when、uh, the idea of diversity and inclusion were threatened、uh, by alternative ideologies, and Richard von Kudenhof Karelgi、uh, always maintained that it is very important to maintain ethnically heterogeneous society. And an inclusive nation, based on the community of culture,、uh, he wrote this book, Pan Europa, in 1923,、uh, in which he tweeted the、uh, Pan European idea, and which had a really significant impact on European history. He wrote that、uh, Europe has always been a place where. Uh, the international conflicts uh, with uh, physical forces used, but、uh, Kudenhof Karelgi maintained that it was very important to put forward、uh, this idea of union,、uh, harmony, and peace、uh, based on the idea of diversity and inclusion. And、uh, upon that idea, he founded the International Pan-European Union. And now this was a very momentous movement, and、uh, Kudenhof Karelgi served as the president for 49 years. And such people as the physicist Albert Einstein, the novelist Thomas Mann, and the psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud were members of this union.、Uh, it is a thriving、uh, movement, and you can check their activities、uh, at this website here. Kudenhof Karelgi was actually the man who suggested that the Ode to Joy、uh, from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony、uh, should be,、uh, be used as the anthem for the European Union. So when the Berlin Wall fell, 
In 1989, uh, people gathered on the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin and performed this really beautiful music. And that was actually based on Kudenhof Karegi's ideas. In 2012, the European Union received the Nobel Peace Prize. And uh, this was in the recognition of the movement's uh, promotion of fraternity between nations. And Richard Kudenhof Karegi himself was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, as is evident from uh, the archives disclosed by the Nobel Committee. And uh, so this idea of uh, com community in Europe encompassing all ethnic uh, diversities and uh, recognizing each other uh, really uh, bear some fruit. And, uh, you know, it was recognized by the Nobel Peace Prize, which I think is very uh, significant. And now, if you look at uh, East Asian region, uh, there have been ideas that are resonant with the idea of UI, of fraternity. Um, uh, for example, uh, Prince Shotoku uh, in Japan, he proposed that uh, harmony is important. Uh, in the first ever written constitution in Japan, the 17th article constitution. So in Japan, this idea, harmony is the most important thing, uh, has been around for more than uh, 1,500 years now. In China, uh, the idea of UI has a much resonance with the classical idea of harmony and peace. Uh, exemplified by the three legendary uh, emperors who achieved a really idealistic uh, society based on uh, peace, diversity, and harmony. And so I think this has a really uh, important and robust tradition in China. In Korea, uh, this idea of Teguk uh, featured in the Korean national flag uh, is very important and it represents the harmony in the universe. And so, you know, um, in East Asia, uh, we do have all these wonderful ideas resonant with the idea of uh, UI. And so I think it is very important to promote harmony and peace based on these common uh, heritages across the region. Dr. Yukio Hatuyama, um, he carries the torch of UI today uh, as a kind of a continuation from Koden Fukarugi and Ichiro Hatoyama, and now in the contemporary world. And uh, he's a founder and leader of the East Asian Community Institute, as well as the World UI Forum. And these organizations are dedicated to the promotion of the spirit of harmony and peace in the East Asian region. Now, if you look at these things from contemporary science, um, you know, UI is very important in that the world is a network and, you know, there are strong ties and weak ties uh, within the committee that we live uh, in local committees and in one nation state, we have strong ties. But on top of that, we have weak ties with people from other countries, from other cultures, with different native tongue. And it, it's shown that, um, you know, that weak ties are as much important as uh, the strong ties. And with weak ties, we can make the system more robust, more creative, and more harmonious. In the brain, um, there are neurotransmitters and substances that uh, promote altruistic behaviors. Uh, which are fundamental in community building. For example, uh, oxytocin, which is a hormone which uh, works to promote empathy and unconditional love, uh, accepting the individual differences, uh, working as um, you know a very important substance in the brain. And it, uh, for example, supports maternal love um, or you know fraternity love. And it is a very important aspect of brain function, uh, studied very rigorously now. In the reward system um, involving 
dopamine neurons and other neural circuits are their processes which support the social cognition, uh, really instrumental uh, in our community building. So there are these wonderful, uh, you know, robust uh, neural circuits which would help us in recognizing each other and, you know, in respecting diversity and, you know, building community together. So I have reviewed a really, uh, you know, uh, in a short time, uh, the really important uh, concept of UI. And uh, I hope you can now have some ideas about what UI is. And, you know, uh, uh, of course, we are living in a really difficult world. You know, there are conflicts, uh, there are different opinions, different ideologies. But I believe that we can build a more harmonious and peaceful world by recognizing the importance of UI and uh, studying its deep implications in today's world and in the near future. So thank you very much.